This is really creepy. I'm scared, man. I'm scared. If you've ever messed with oxyhydrogen, you know why. Okay, I think that's... Oh, shit. See what I mean? I told you I was scared, dude. All right, fellas. I might have a cool one here. This might be a total disaster. I've been interested in additive manufacturing for a long time. And I thought about the idea of being able to make a high temperature crucible using a additive manufacturing type technique. Now, the dimensions of this device are not ideal. They're based on the supplies I had at hand. It's like one o'clock in the morning. So I wanted to try this out. And what we're looking at here is an oxy hydrogen torch. Now the outer annular orifice that you see there is the oxy hydrogen and the inner pin stock is connected to this little tank and this valve. There's an air input valve there. And I have some silica sand inside of this. On the other end of this torch, we have a, uh, a very powerful oxy hydrogen torch that I built a while back. This pulls 40 amps at 220 volts out of the wall. So pretty substantial amount of power. We're also gonna be mixing a little bit of propane gas with it because oxy hydrogen by itself can be very destructive. It will uh, burn this torch up in a heartbeat. So to keep the torch from self-destructing, I'm gonna add a little bit of propane. However, that may inhibit the oxy hydrogen's ability to do its job. In addition to that, I have a bag of zinc here that I thought would be really interesting to experiment with. I've actually got two of them. And I've been wanting to be able to apply zinc to rusted metal or old metal. So I'm gonna get a couple more artifacts out here. I'm gonna try and coat some items with silica sand. I'm gonna to try to build a crucible just by sitting here and spinning the torch, see if I can do an additive manufacturing process to build a high temperature crucible. And I might throw some zinc powder in the tank here if I don't blow myself up. I don't know what you guys can see here. I'm gonna turn the freaking torch on. It's fly or die. Man, this sucks. I don't wanna do it. There's 16 amps. That is 3,000 watts of electricity. Okay, I'm at 22 amps. Alright, 30 amps of power. Oh, this is creepy. Alright guys, we're over 15 liters a minute here. This thing's going freaking nuts. I'm going to touch it off. Here we go. This is creepy. Oh shit, what was that all about? I don't know what just happened. We're gonna get too bright. I'm not even ready. Yes. Oh, it's too much back flare. There goes the sand. Ow! It hurt. Yeah. It hurts really bad. Might be too much sand. Oh, yeah. The 
burst like hell and get burnt. Ow! All right, let's shut this off. I think I'm out of sand. Well, we all know that um, a lot of this type of technology requires supersonic particle velocities. So, I'm just way underpowered on the oxyhydrogen here. I could take it up to 40 amps. It could go more than that, but I don't want to burn the building down. The wires in the wall can't handle more than that. So... I didn't... It didn't look like 10 more amps was going to get us there. <laughs> We, it looks like we need about 100 amps of power coming out of the end of this thing to give us a flame that's like this long of some really good oxyhydrogen power. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a try one more time, but I feel like we got to do a new strategy with this limited amount of power. I'm going to have to have a doser connected to the torch that just lets material fall into the flame. This is way too big. I could try to do a smaller one, maybe use a conventional uh, type nozzle that I use, but I don't know. This is definitely too freaking big. I feel like another test would just be a waste of our time. It didn't do anything to this. It did start to melt it a little bit right there. So yeah, uh, <laughs> too much feather on the flame. I had to put too much propane into the flame to keep it from exploding. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stop it here and uh, we'll modify this torch and we'll give it another try. All right, fellas, I got this tube here. I initially didn't try it because I was concerned it would become clogged. But in retrospect, that was kind of stupid for not using that one. I thought I would have more power than I do. I put my hand up against this thing with the torch turned off. Without the flame lit, I should say. The torch turned on. There is just nowhere near the amount of turbulence and stuff that we need. So, I'm going to have to remove the um, inner components of this back to the drawing board. I'm going to build a nozzle out of this, but uh, in the meantime, I think I'll post this failure just to show you guys what I'm up to.